active and the operative word that we use in our chart for this particular sabbatical portion. Okay, let's try to clean this, this board a little bit better. The operative word that we use is mentantu, because our focus, if you look at our um, sabbatical chart, our focus, our focus is on the cleansing. But now, from the Jewish, um, from the Jewish perspective, the focus is on um, mitzora, one disease, or on the leprosy. Now, this portion is continuing from last week's portion. And last week's portion um, of chapter 13, it actually enumerates, it actually enumerates the leprosy. It actually enumerates what is leprosy. Now, we've touched on chapter 13 concerning leprosy. Give me one moment just to clean this off. All right. Uh, for these dry erase boards, those of you who have dry erase boards, um, Rubbing alcohol does well to clean it. Just a little point. I think we Googled it and found out about that. Just for ones and ones that might be having a little bit of trouble, you know, keeping their dry erase boards clean. But what we want to continue and focus on now is the the um, the, the the weekly Torah portion for this particular week. Now we're in the Vayikra. And ones and ones have asked, well, when are we going to get numbers and um, numbers and Deuteronomy out here? You know, um, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. We're doing what, not just what we can, not making no excuse, you understand, but what about you? You overs? Anyway, we have to work in order. Order is very important. And, and we've been talk, speaking on order. And one basic way to get your house in order is, first of all, to learn what his will is. And if you're studying along with us, the Torah portion readings and feedings, you're learning probably a lot of things. You understand? Continue to learn, watch, pray, take notes, and hopefully pray and find fellowship partners to study with. This is, this is the key thing. You understand? This is, this is where the key thing but at least you should become familiar with what is in his word and find the truth for yourself. So once again, Shabbat Shalom, Send Bet Salam. This is the 28th weekly Torah portion reading and feeding in what we know as and what we call as our RSS or Rastafari Sabbatical Studies, RSS number 28, and there's a, there's a key difference. Both words are M words. Metzora, Metzora from, from the root um, Sara, Sara, and Menzatu. They sound pretty similar in Hebrew and Amharic are both Afro Shemitic languages. But our focus. Because it's not an error. Some might say if they study this deeply, you know, saying within the Hebrew and them hearts, they'll say, but wait, how come you did not choose um, the verse says, yes This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his what cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest. So the focus of Metzora is on the one disease, right? And we're picking up from chapter 13. Now, true, chapter 13 speaks of leprosy. Here's where we get all the so-called white signs, you know, the European signs or the white signs, you know, um, the blonde hair, um, the skin turning from, from, from an Ethiopian or, or ethnic Hebrew black, reddish-brown complexion, to, um, you know, as they cut to the bone until it gets to the pink, the, the, the raw flesh. And that's what Leviticus 13 basically deals with. But now here in Mesora Parsha, or Bemensatu and Kufu, is dealing with the cleansing, the cleansing. 
So now this is the 28th weekly Torah portion reading and feeding. So we have two words here. We have the, the Jewish, you understand, in the Jewish version, we have Mesora, you understand, some actually have it as okay, a little bit of our, uh, okay, right there, TZ, Mesora, and then the, um, for us in the Mark, we say, the men, uh, the men are to, all right, right, the, this marker here is going out a little bit. Give me one moment. The men are to, the men uh, are to, and we're going to use blue, right? True blue. So here's that. Uh, this is not a true blue right here, but we'll make it work there which is prepositional, and on, by way of, men, uh, fa, to, and en, right, or in cleansing day, right, in cleansing day, or in the day of cleansing. Now, what is this portion about? Well, first of all, we, t we spoke on in the last part, the kind of intro, we were interrupted with that, um, that this is in our annual Hebraic cycle of Torah readings. This is the fifth in the book of Leviticus, the fifth in, in the Orit, the Torah of Zelewawian, or the Torah of Leviticus. And it constitutes Leviticus 14 and 1 to Leviticus 15 and 33. So basically roughly two chapters, similar to... <coughs> similar to last week's uh, portion, um, Tazaria, which also was about um, two or so chapters, right? Two or so chapters. Now, if you have been studying with I and I, the Torah portion reading for you, you know that some weeks it's, 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 it's much more, probably three, four, five, sometimes chapters. But just because two chapters, the contents of it are very, very detailed. You understand? So if you're studying this in detail, you will learn a whole lot. Now, we're not going to focus so much on, you know, the leprosy, 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 white, how, where white folks came from, where the other so-called Jews came from. We understand that. We're not going to get caught up on that. Some are trying to stay in denial. We already see in chapter 13 where the black Jews became the so-called white Jews, or at least one very very clear possibility and probability from the scriptures because clearly it's saying that you know it's pointing out all the signs of black people turning white now here's the cleansing of it now you have to remember something about leprosy and since we're on this topic matter of leprosy because it's a very important point about leap year that we wanted to touch on but what we said let's first deal deal for summary on the whole idea of leprosy which we didn't touch on from last week we focused on um, the portions on like pregnancy, you understand, which we thought was very, very important. Because there's laws that have been ignored on childbirth, you understand. Now, the, the portion of skin disease and clothing, we didn't touch on in the detail that we would have liked. So in this cleansing portion, we might um, digress a little bit to touch on those previous portions. As you can see, it's one consistent you know, it's one consistent teaching. It just so happens that in our Torah portion readings and feedings, we have the opportunity week by week or um, each week to study it, you understand, um, in kind of like bite-sized portions. So, brothers and sisters, take opportunity of that. You understand? Take opportunity of that right there. Um, don't despise... Um, the, the, the small beginnings as the Bible teaches us, as the Holy Spirit teaches us. Now, in the Luni solar Hebrew calendar contains up to 55 weeks. The exact number varies between 50 in common years or 54 and 55 in leap years. Now, here's what's very interesting, and this is what we want to really begin on at first, to really touch on it at first. And this is is 2012 a leap year, or is 2012 not a leap year? So what we're going to do, 
before we go into too much of that right there on that particular point, we're going to save that for for another another vid, and we want to continue on this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, you understand, know, for the brothers and sisters that are tuning in um, to study and to learn what thus saith the glory of his majesty, what thus saith the Bible. Now, the Parsha Metzora, um is um, usually combined with Tazria. We, we pointed that out in so-called common years, which are not leap years, and here, according to the lunar solar or the lunar and the solar Hebrew calendar, 2012 is not a leap year. And according to uh, Kidanachin, or this right here, which we hopefully can can upload, put on the site from our good brother Nabora Id, or our brother Nabora Id of Ethiopia, the kingdom of God, this particular calendar also says that 2012 this year is not a leap year. <laughs> but the Western calendar, you know what I'm saying, and the non-Jewish or Hebrew calendar says 2012 is a leap year. And I think I, I, I think I figured it out because earlier today with some of the fam, we were having a uh, discussion. Certain ones had um, my sister-in-law and others had, you know, I found that out. You know, and I, and I, um, mother-in-law, Ethiopian mother-in-law, looked at this particular, this calendar, and said, "Wait, this 2012 is a leap year." You know, the whole thing about February, when February has the extra day, so forth and so on. So we were discussing it, and just now, in speaking with you about this, it's like that light has just, you know, lekun berhanu, berhan yihunale. Let there be light, and there was light. There's illumination. I think I understand exactly why from the Hebrews or the Jews and the Ethiopian, the faithful Ethiopians say that 2012 is not a leap year. We're going to get into that, but this is not to get too sidetracked. Stay tuned, stay tuned for that. But let's just deal with Mesorah or Bemenas Atuk and the Day of Cleansing. Now, on the issue of leprosy, on the issue of leprosy, now, from a five cycle perspective, right? Since this is basically dealing with um, what we call leprosy, right? Some can call it leprosy originally was, we can call it turning white disease. You understand that? Read, just read and study Leviticus chapter 13. You understand that we've dealt with Leviticus chapter 13, even we did videos when we first started posting videos on. Ethiopian World Net and some other channels, and you know we even gave graphic picture, which I think made a lot of white people and others who suffer from psoriasis and other kind of um, skin diseases probably made them feel bad because they probably thought, you know, like oh there they go bragging we have this skin ailment. No, all we're doing is just proving what the Bible says, who's who, and probably what makes a lot of um, Europeans or white folks feel bad is that they were suffering under a delusion. You understand? Called white supremacy. You understand? And they were using, many of them, and still are, using the Bible to justify so called white supremacy. But it's very, very clear when we study the scripture, you understand, um, that leprosy, old time leprosy, you understand? Yeah, Lems Dewey, right? Dewey, right? Lems Dewey. Original leprosy dealt with, was on the outer level, on the physical level. Remember what we talked about even with the animal sacrifice, that these animal sacrifices were types. It was like teaching Beta Israel from a babe. So it's like you give your children and you give the children, like in kindergarten, you give them um, big examples. You see what I'm saying? In order as they grow that they can they can be able to um, comprehend um, in a more refined way. You know what I'm saying? You know, like you give them big pictures, big, you know, write big, the big letters. This is an A and this is a B. So that later on they'll be able to write small A, small B, and you don't deal with it. So this is what we have here in the Torah. So the Torah is our schoolmaster. We find this in the New Testament. The Torah is our schoolmaster until Christ becomes. So it's not that we keep reading the Torah and then we're looking 
you know what I'm saying, for a five cycle Jesus. So a yes is no. Because Christ, you know what I'm saying, Bible teaches, you know what I'm saying? This is a spiritual idea. It's a consciousness idea. So we are growing up by studying the word of the Almighty so that we'll be able to recognize the true Christ in spirit and in truth. You know what I'm saying? And not get caught up on a lot of the different the different counterfeit forms of Christianity. You know what I'm saying? And this is why many folks in counterfeit forms of Christianity don't even recognize that when we ask the question, where do white people come from? It's right there in the Bible. It's right there in the Bible. But black folks have been told that, you know, Ham, Shem, and Japheth kind of mythology, false mythology, false Eurocentric mythology that, you know, when Ham looked on his father's nakedness, he stuck out his lips, <laughs> his eyes got big. This is actually what they teach. You understand? This is actually what a lot of fake-ass Talmudic Jews teach. I say fake ass because they know that that's not the truth of it. But they use these things, and these things have been used, and they have never been deconstructed. You understand? They have never been taken apart. All we hear about now is that we don't want to talk about racial things because it's sensitive. So we're not talking about racial things. We're talking about science. And that's what this portion of the Torah deals with. It deals with the science, you understand, of leprosy. And now the interesting thing that we learn is that leprosy can be in an individual. It can be physical. We learn that leprosy can be in clothing. We learn that leprosy can be in a house. A house can have leprosy. Makes me think, is this kind of leprosy kind of what we what they call today mold? Could it be what we call mold today? You see, so it's very, very interesting. So now we know we're living in a time right now where the Bible prophesies graves and grievous sort of pestilences. You understand? In these last days and time of the Gentile world dominion, it's prophesied grievous pestilences because basic hygienic and cleansiness physically psychologically and spiritually have been ignored. So when we're studying here the physical leprosy, make sure you recognize there is also psychological, soul leprosy, and spiritual leprosy. Now, <laughs> some, some of the ultra-Negro black people, they ain't going to like this very much, what we're about to say. But, you know, they say that the truth is an offense, it's not a sin. Although white people today, the majority of white folks today, physically speaking, the majority, not all, but physically speaking, although they will be classed as what the Bible calls clean lepers, they're clean lepers, you see. Now, we have the psoriasis and a lot of these other skin ailments, they're coming back. You know what I'm saying? But we're learning that they're not just coming back with so-called white folks, but they're coming back with also a lot of black folks. But be that as it may. There's also spiritual leprosy, and many of our people, they suffer from spiritual leprosy in the exact same way that some of the early Hebrews and mixed multitudes suffered from physical leprosy. This is the key. I mean, this is, this is a very important matter, and hopefully we'll have more opportunity to disclose this particular issue. So leprosy, let's just note this right here, leprosy Originally, one was five cycle or physical, right? Leprosy two, you understand? Leprosy two is spiritual. And though white people, Europeans by and large, are the nowadays by comparison to what we have described here in Vayikra or in the Torah, white people today, Europeans today, by and large, are what may be called, quote, unquote, clean lepers. Black folks, by and large, are what you can call spiritually unclean lepers. Did you know that? I'm going to get into some detail. There's a very good article if you want to go up ahead of I and I. Some of you all might have already seen this particular article. You understand? It's called um, Chapter 15, and it's at our website. Are ye not all as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? 
So get this particular article. You can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and you can download this particular article. It's a PDF. Are ye not all as the children of Ethiopia done to me? It's a, it's a pretty um, interesting article. Um, not that long, but, but it's, 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 it's a good study, and I don't think we highlighted this right here, but this particular um, uh, Jewish brethren who wrote this, and I call him a brethren not because he is physically black, but if black in the true sense links with Christ and God and truth, he is black in that sense, but a clean leper, but he's passed on now. But this particular article right here was, was, was very, very, as well as some other stuff from the particular website, revelation27.org. And he was having a, uh, a, a kind of debate. Okay, here we go right here. He was having a debate with some black folks, some of our more, um, how can you say, some of the more, um, <laughs> the more extreme, you know, some of our Hebrew Israelites and the rest of them, you know, um, ones who still are novices. He was he was reasoning with some novices. You understand? And though he could have come off much more harshly, seeing that he understood the truth a little bit better than they did. Let me just give you a little example right here. Um, it says, because uh, he was reasoning with them, and um, the point of leprosy came up. This is on page 17, so you can check this out. One mature-looking man in a very fine suit walked into the crowd. He identified himself as a pastor of some congregation and said, you know that we are your daddies. This is uh, some black folks and some white folks around the Bible, Torah, Israelite identity, having a back-and-forth discussion, right? So this, this, um, this, this, this black man walks up and, and it says, you know that we are your daddies. We black men are your fathers, right? This is what he says to this, 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 this white um, or European or Jew, right? Um, and um, trying, I suppose, to disorganize my thinking. This is, this is the, the Jewish brother and the one who wrote this article um, speaking. Quote, all the ways of God please me, I said. The Jew, the European Jew said this to the, quote, black Jews. And if all our common forefathers were Africans, then I am pleased and intrigued with the very idea of it. But I must remind you, if the black man was the original Adam, then he is also responsible for the fall of the human race. Have, 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 have y'all considered that, really? See, we, we talk that Adam was black, Eve was black, so forth and so on. But have we also considered that if that is true, I accept and I know that that is true. But for those who still are a little bit more uh, debatable about the matter, if that is true, then doesn't that mean also that the black man, and in fact what we suffer as black men, is because of that fall from our original divine responsibility. And focusing, oh, the white man, the white man, the white man, yeah. Part of what we're getting from the white man is because we fell from our original responsibility with God. Therefore, once again, as we said before, the black man's problem is a God problem. That don't mean that there, there aren't some, some, some crackers and, and some, 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 some um, racists and white folks that, that, that need to be put under arrest and taken to the court of God's law, you understand, and judgment executed upon them. But before we can even get to that stage, we've got to deal with our job problem or our God problem. But let's go on with this article right here. So if the black man was the original Adam, then he is also responsible for the fall, for the fall of the human race. And that the way to the tree of life, in parentheses, the higher mysteries of God, or Jah, if you please, were taken from him. And it was the higher mysteries, the access to the tree of life, the higher mysteries of God were taken from the black man slash African, so forth and so on. But we are all the children of the spirit, not born of the blood, 
nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John chapter 1, the Gospel of John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Then when he said this, check this out. When this, when this white brethren said this, Jewish, white European Jewish brethren said this, um, he gets a, you know, he, you know how, you know how niggas can get. Some niggas said, not you, he said, not you. You, quote, the white man, are the children of your spiritual father, the devil, and the works of the devil you will do. Quote, as the serpent is lifted up in the wilderness, I replied, the, the Jewish brethren who wrote this article replied, God is in the process of redeeming actually creating, actually recreating, and this now dovetails his Matthew's teaching. You understand? In other words, that becoming a new race, you know, that, that, that ultimate challenge. Where are we to turn for the answers to questions that have never been asked? Study that speech, that, that word sound, that utterance of his majesty. So this brother said, as the serpent is lifted up in the wilderness, I replied, God is in the process of redeeming, actually creating human nature, and will each soul in its proper time. That's the key, too. Each soul in its proper time. In other words, instead of you looking, my brothers and sisters, looking at the brother to the left of you or the sister to the right of you or others, you should keep your, your focus on the King of Kings and his Christ, but mainly keep your focus on the Word and the Spirit of God. Don't worry about, oh, I want to be like you. I want to see all, all that's covetous. You see, and that, that, that stunts a lot of your progress spiritually speaking, but each soul must develop in its own proper time. Transform the spirit of the entire human creature into the glorious liberty of the sons and the daughters of God. Then one of the Negroes said, the black folks said, not you, he intoned, you are cursed with leprosy. The whiteness of leprosy and the curse hangs over you this very day. I feel sorry for this brother. And see, when you, when you truly are the black Messiah conscious or truly Christ conscious, you will also feel sorry for these brothers and sisters who have this philosophy. Now, some of y'all may be the same one. You'll be like, Ross, I Adonis, you broke down the white man, all this leprosy, and how are you going to, are you going against that, yo? I'm not going against that. I'm, I'm, I'm affirming that is true. But that's just part of the story. You need to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and that's what sets you free. Not just a little bit of truth here that makes you feel, oh, what, what? My boy, you came from leprosy? But check this out. One strident Israelite, black Israelite that is, said to another, why are you even talking to that white devil? <laughs> You've heard that before, right? But, but how? I thought to myself, can he know what color I am? See, now, now, now this one is going a little bit higher. Now, please bear with me. I asked him, how do you know that I am not a black man in, white man's, in a white man's body and born this time because of God's love for all their children among those who are so obviously in need of redemption? And how do you know that you are not a white man, a leprous man in a black man's body? What, with all the hatred and mistrust for others you are showing? Guess what? This, Negro, this Israelite Negro didn't answer. Because it's not all who are of Israel are Israel. Make note of that. See, why even the black even the very physically black and kinky woolly here, Ethiopian-looking Israelites fell, even in that time, is because they sought to establish by their zealousness their own righteousness, and they did not submit to the righteousness of the Christ of his majesty, Yeshua. It's the same way it's like a lot of black Hebrew Israelites and a lot of, a lot of folks today don't submit to the righteousness of the king of kings. You see, some of the things they say are similar at a point, but then it gets really parochial and childish. They don't move beyond that. You understand? Because they can't move beyond that. You understand? Because in a sense, they are under a curse. You understand? Because they need to be 
cleansed. You see, that this leprosy thing is deep. This leprosy thing, first of all, it's deep when you study the physical level of it. It explains so much. Even a lot of these skin diseases and the stuff that's going on now is all a part of this. You understand? It's all part of this, this, this old-time leprosy. But then what about the spiritual leprosy? You see, once I've lost track of the spiritual leprosy, remember, this is Old Testament. But we're looking at the Old Testament with that veil being taken off our eyes in the Moshiach, in our black Lord and Savior, Joshua. Let me just go on with this a little bit more. James 3, 9 to 18 says, Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. You see, this cleansing of the leper is really about purity. You understand? It's, it's, it's about purity. This particular section in our 28th Torah portion in reading and feeding is about hygienics, but it's about purity. It's about ritual impurity and how to bring it to the point of purity. And there's a spiritual lesson in that. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. Salamawi, gentle, not gentile, but kind, in other words. Crystals, Christian, and easy to be entreated. In other words, it's reasonable. It's not unreasonable. Full of mercy, not condemnation, but mercy and good fruits. In other words, there is fruit on that tree. It's not like that tree that Christ, remember when Christ walked past that fig tree and the fig tree had a bunch of leaves on it and he went up to it desiring fruit. And when he went up to it and desiring fruit, he saw there was no fruit on it and he cursed it. Right? And then the disciples and then went to where they was going to town, paying a visit, so forth and so on. When they came back, they looked and said, hey, wait, look at that tree. That tree that you had cursed, that had all the leaves, look, it's withered. How did that happen? They were surprised. But Christos was showing us a sign even for this time. So the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without, without, without what? partiality. Oh, well, if he's a black man, then niggas, you got to watch out. And without hypocrisy, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. What did he say in the Sermon on the Mount? Bless are the what? Peacemakers. You understand? The peace, for they shall be called what? The Bani Ha Elohim, the Exiavi Helijos. They shall be called the children of God, the children of Jah, Rastafari, if you please. And all the gent, there was an older gent that asked a question after this little exchange. He said, Well, after all, what color is God? Black. If you are the same color as God, my friend, then you are invisible. You see, now if we're going to deal with the spirit of the matter, God is the spirit. And this is all, I mean, we're going to talk scripture, scripture. Let's talk scripture, right? For God is the spirit, and those who worship God must do so in spirit and in truth. You see, the true Rastafari, we acknowledge the spirit of God in his majesty. You understand? Not just, not just um, the fact that he is Ethiopian or black. Because some people think so. They say, well, well, um, look, so and so is an Ethiopian. Look at this. Ethiopian. So what? We don't feel no. There's no spirit there. There's no fruit. What? What? It's because they're Ethiopian. You understand? There's a lot. There's a lot of Jews around when when Joshua was around. They wasn't the Christ. You understand? There was no spirit in them. There was no fruit that verified. There is spirit in the King of Kings, in His Word, in His deed, in His manifestation, and. I and I is the fruit today for those who say, well, where's the fruit? I and I is that fruit. Deal with that. You understand? Deal with that. Now, he said, doesn't it say that it's he is like pure wool? See Daniel 7 and 9. Who else has he like wool? A woman concluded, and doesn't it say that he is the color of bronze? Yes, I replied, while it also says in one verse, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, Song of Songs 1 and 5, 
It says in another, my beloved is white and ruddy, Song of Solomon 5, 8 to 11. The black mentioned here also implies a state of hiddenness. Now, notice what, what the writer of this didn't do. He didn't, he didn't contradict that God is not black. But he's saying that y'all are just limiting it to the what? The physical. What about the spiritual? You see? So you have the vessel that God wanted to use. But what happened? That vessel had a leak in it, right? The Israelite vessel, the black people. And what God did, he, he threw it down. He threw it down. He, he threw it away. You know what I'm He said, you know what? That's the vessel I wanted to fill up, but it could not hold my substance. So I'm turning to the Gentiles who never had the law. I never sent angels to them or, or communicated to them my message. But even though they are not what I want, somehow within their, their, their spirit they seek me. You know the part where Paul talked about that these who don't have the law, that don't have Torah, if they do the things that Torah says, in a sense, they are a law to themselves. Not because they are fighting against Torah or the wisdom of Torah, but because they already have a spirit within them that inclines to it. But what about the folks that have been given Torah? You understand? Know what, what about his racial people who have been given Torah and have rejected it? They'd be, they be black. See, that's why a lot of folks can't understand what's going on right now. They can't understand what's happened with black people in ancient times or up. Why are black people down? Why, oh, what's going on? They think that it's strictly a racial thing. No, the devil's fooling you with the racial thing. The racial thing is one level of it, but really what, what, what the racial conflict is powered by is spiritual. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a spiritual matter. You know what I'm saying? It's a spiritual matter. You know what we could call the racial matter? The racial matter on one level is like the head fake. You know what I mean? It's like the head fake in a sense. You know, it's, 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 there is something to it, but only for those who are so caught up in the physical world that they can't perceive the spirit, the spiritual behind it. You know what I'm saying? So they can be easily fooled by the shell game. You know what I'm saying? Easily fooled by the shell game. So the black mansion here also implies a state of hiddenness, and specifically that which is obscured before the dawn hour and revealed each morning with the rising with the rising sun. As it is also written, quote, this is from Psalm eighteen and one, as the morning spread up well actually as the morning spread upon the nations, Joel two and two and Psalm eighteen and one here, the Lord hath made darkness what? The Lord hath made darkness what? His hidden place which, of course, does not mean that God is not black. This is one that I love about that. I actually met, got to meet this brother before he passed on to the, to the spirit world. And um, this is interesting because he said, this does not mean that God is not black in the anthropomorphic and metaphysical sense. Of course, they are. Of course, Elohim is. So, he, see, this one even admits in this article are ye not all as the children of the Ethiopians to me? Then in that sense, yes. In the, the anthropomorphic and the metaphysical sense, yes, God is black. It is just that he and she. See, a lot of folks say that that, that bugs them out. Because what they're going to do is they're going to put she before he and, and mix up the whole, the whole paradigm. That he and she is both hidden and revealed in all the races of humanity together. Every true child of God knows this. Then he goes on to say, and so neither is the hair of wool the hair of any human being or race of people. It is the hair of the ram, according to Daniel 8 and 3. The ram is a symbol of the divine Abba, the divine Father under whose watchful and corrective guidance the children of Israel took their rise 4,000 years ago in the time of Abraham, which was during the so-called Vedic age. And again 2,000 years later under the symbol of the Lamb 
of God. The ram represents the sign of Aries, symbolizes all the power of the east, which the Father has reserved, all the power of the what? East, which the Father has reserved for himself against the day of judgment. The children that went forth out of the east in the form of the universal body of Christ are symbolized by a lamb because their ultimate mission in this age is to lay down their lives and to die. Not only the first death, the death of the old nature, but the second death as well, and then to rise again, Romans 8, 31 to 39. And this, remember, we've been studying Romans 8. That's, that's a point that you need to check out with the previous um, reasoning on the whole ecological situation, right? And this, so that the prince of this world, who's the prince of this world? The spirit of Antichrist in the earth might be manifest in the end. And also that the pathway that leads out of the dimensions of this world into the eternal dimensions might be manifest as well. Only those with true soul force can pass through. Only those with true soul force. You see, our physical bodies, on one level, we didn't really do too much. We were given a body. So the best we can do is at least maintain cleansiness, maintain morality and righteousness. But it's really, what is the condition of our souls and spirit? Don't be sidetracked, my brothers. You understand? Yes, we love the fact that John made I and I black. You understand? We recognize that Christ is one of us. But we know that just that recognition alone does not give us a soul force to pass through. So don't be sidetracked. Don't be, you know, don't be fooled, hoodwinked. Bamboozle. Now, this goes on into some, some other aspects of this whole thing about the ram and the figure of Brahma. Once again, we'll point this out. We kind of digressed a little bit, but this is just the point that at a deeper level to this whole, Levit to this whole Leviticus teaching excuse me, on um, leprosy that many will focus over and over, and this is the physical side, and this is this side, and so forth and so on, and some will get caught up on, look, we black, and they white, so forth and so on, they got leprosy, so forth and so on, so forth and so on, right? That's, 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 that's child, that's, that's the, like basic kindergarten education. What's the higher level of it? And we wonder why for all that we know. You understand why we're still in the situation that we're in because there's still a half of the story that we have not been either told or we don't want to hear or we don't want to receive, you see? So this portion, that this part that, that deals with the ritual impurity, it addresses the cleansing from what is known as, in the Hebrew, as the sarat, the, the sarat. It almost sounds like the wrath the wrath, the tsarat, right, or the tsarat. Houses, even homes, just get this, homes have, are able to have what's called an eruptive plague. Now, like I, I'm, I'm trying to make a comparison between the physical and the spiritual. So first we're studying the physical. When you get a good idea of the physical, like Christ said, if if, if I've shown you earthly things, if you can't get the earthly things, how can you get the heavenly things? In other words, if you can't get the things that are right before your eyes, how are you going to get the spiritual thing that, that your mind, your mind's eye, has to be able to perceive? You understand? The male genital discharges and menstruation. Now, this is interesting because you always hear... <laughs> You know, folks talk about, this is a brother, and, you know, the sisters, they got their menses, their menstruation. Uh, bro, you don't got no, you don't have no, no genital discharge, do you? That's some cleansiness, too. You see what I'm saying? You, you know, so we have to not just focus on, oh, look at the woman, the woman got these such and such and such. Some of that's obvious. Some, some of that they don't hide. But what are you hiding? In other words, let's, let's get right with job because the time is very, 
very late. I mean, we are on mercy. We are on mercy. We're on mercy clock right now. I mean, extreme mercy clock. You know, cleansing from the skin disease is touched on in this part of the show. Houses with the eruptive play, male genital discharge and menstruation are covered in these particular in these particular um, 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 chapters, in these particular chapters right here, like Leviticus 13 and 14, going to the inner biblical interpretation, associates skin disease with uncleanness. And Leviticus 15 associates various sexually related events with uncleanness. In the Hebrew Bible, uncleanness has a variety of associations. Leviticus 11 and 8 um, and 11, Leviticus 21, 1 to 4, to 4 and verse 11, Numbers chapter 6, verses 6 to 7, Numbers chapter 19, verses 11 to 16, they associate it with death. Uncleanness is associated with death. You know, like the harbinger of death. And perhaps similarly, Leviticus 12 associates it with childbirth. In other words, it, 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 it emphasizes extreme caution, you know what I'm saying, in childbirth. Now, we can expand on that, but, but just put this down as basic notes. Leviticus 13 to 14 associates it with skin disease. Leviticus 15 associates it with various sexually related events. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 7 and 23. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. And Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 30, along with Hosea chapter 6, verse 10. It associates it with contact with the worship of alien gods. We thought that was probably the most interesting thing alien and extraterrestrial or demonic um, interdimensional entities, in other words, also associates um, skin disease, limbs that way, leprosy with this. This is interesting because, you know, in Africa, some parts of Africa, even Ethiopia, the leprosy, the, it, the old time leprosy works a little bit different than it did back then. In other words, you know, um, this new leprosy, and, and you see, the new leprosy doesn't just turn turn parts of the body white or as it was before, because it's metastasized to such a point. But now, looking at what's behind this, you see, it's all about hygienics. See, Leviticus is like true blue. When we talk about Leviticus, it's not like true blue. It's about being under under not just the color of law, but being under the operation of law. And when we talk about law, people think it means court cases and arrest and, and, and sentencing people. But when it's about law, it's about the law of healthiness. That's what this book Leviticus deals with. Leviticus really goes beyond just, just um, you know, animal sacrifices and stuff. It is speaking about how the holy people are not just, are not just spiritually, you understand, to, to govern themselves, but also it speaks on how the, um, for example, when, when we were speaking about with leprosy, leprosy is one particular aspect, and then we know that that's, that's dealing with cleansiness. It's talking about childbirth. You understand? We go through all the different points in Leviticus. You understand? We see that on one level it deals with the spiritual matters. On another level, it deals with the legal matters, how the social life of Beta Israel, so we can say the psychological level. Then it also is dealing with the physical aspect of foods. You understand that, that a holy people also must have a holy, fo holy foods or holistic foods. So it's covering all of those aspects you know, saying, that the, the true um, inheritors of the new age, you know, saying, must receive in spirit and in truth. Those who cannot get up in that sense, not down, but up, you know what I'm saying, with John's way of living, the new age, they cannot pass through this, this door at this time of judgment and great, great tribulation, you understand, symbolizes. You understand? Not just symbolizes, but 
is. Let's just put it like that for a moment. Let's get through some of this right here, right? So the alien gods are associated with, so, you know, with leprosy. <laughs> That's mad interesting. But the Hebrew Bible reports that skin disease, Zara'at, and a person affected by skin disease, which is the metzora, the metzora is actually the person who's affected. In other words, Bamarinya, we will say um, the lemsamu, lemsamu. In other words, the one who has the lems, the delwe, you understand? Um, lemsamu, lemsamu. At several places, and often and sometimes incorrectly, it's translated as leprosy and a leper. Now, why is it mistranslated as that? Well, because we have to get deep into the root of it, all right? In Exodus 4 and 6, to help Moses to convince others that God had sent him, Ha Elohim instructed Moses to put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, his hand was leprous, or misoraat, as white as snow. Now, in Leviticus 13 to 14, the Torah, the Orit, it sets out regulations for skin diseases, or zara'at, and a person affected by skin disease, or metzora. In Numbers 12 and 10, after Miriam, Moses' sister. Think about that. The, the, the same one that was there when Moses looked a baby. So we know that she was, she was his older sister. Let's put it in context. context. His older sister, after Miriam spoke against Moses, Musa, Jah's cloud, Yahweh's cloud removed from the tent of meeting, and Miriam was leprous or mitzoraat, as white as snow. Now, in Deuteronomy 24, verses 8 to 9, Moses warned the Beit Israel. What did he warn the Beit Israel of? He warned the Beit Israel in the case of skin disease or zara'at diligently. That means pay careful attention. Learn what's up and know what you're doing. In other words, for us, this is study. In other words, know what, what's what. That's why whenever it says diligently, diligently do something, that means there's no excuse. Like, well, I, I didn't know that you wasn't diligent. Well, how do you mean you don't know? Unless something new is being introduced, but if nothing is new is introduced, you should know and therefore diligently to observe all that the priest would teach them. Diligently observe all that the priest would teach them, remembering what God did to Miriam. That is interesting. Now, Miriam, you know, just when we think about the whole thing with Miriam, that, that, that Mariam, um, Moses' older sister, and the leprosy punk, because he, she spoke against Moses, what, what kind of wife? His Ethiopian wife. This is this is interesting. You know, we're saying interesting in many ways, more ways than one. But let's get through some of the other leprosy points in the Bible. In Second Kings five one to nineteen, part of the Haftarah or the Nabiyat for Parsha Tazaria, which was last week's so or connected with this week, the prophet Elisha he cures Naaman. Naaman, or, or you might pronounce as Naaman, the commander of the army of the king of Aram, who was a leper or a metzora. In 2 Kings 7, verses 3 to 20, part of the Haftarah, or the Nabiyad Kufl, for the Parsha Metzora, the story is told of four leprous men, or metzorayim, metzorayim at the gate during the Armenians or the Syrian siege of Samaria, the northern country. We can call it like in an Ethiopia sense, Eritrea. You know what I mean? The Aramaeans would be like in a sense the Italians. And in Second Chronicles 26 and 19, after King Uzziah, or Uzziah, tried to burn incense in the temple of Jerusalem, King Uzziah, he, he thought he could... He thought he could burn the Aishans. What happened? Leprosy, Sarat, broke forth on his forehead. Very, very interesting. Now, what's the classic, you know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, um, 
a classic or rabbinical interpretation that might um, shed a little bit of light upon this. Because they said that, see, in the Midrash, those who have studied this, they taught that skin disease, and this is something that's big going on now. They talk about, I mean, if you look in the news and, and TV, there's a whole bunch of products for skin disease. But one is not looking at the, the hot yacht or the sin, whether it's physical doing, whether it's psychological or spiritual, that causes. See, people just think it's a physical orientated thing. But what Torah teaches is that it is spiritual, it is like psycho spiritual. Psycho spirit it begins in the psycho spiritual world. All this ease and it comes into this world and becomes manifestable once it reaches the rate of atmosphere. In other words, once it once it has an opportunity. And the same way that it enters in, this is where the leprosy in many cases was, was healed, it can be sent back, similar to the case with Miriam. You understand? And say Miriam you understand, had leprosy all the days of her life, but she was definitely unclean, you understand, for those seven days. Now, there are ten sins that the Midrash teaches, right? And, and now you notice that the, the leper, who used to be just like one of us, in other words, just like one of us, but that one who now develops this skin disease or leprosy is put without the camp. They are looked at to see what the state is after X amount of days, seven days, more days, and what, what the Torah teaches in 13 and 14, chapter 13 and 14, that like if this thing doesn't start to get better, you understand, they still are, you know, left outside the camp. So what would happen to all these folks who somehow had, had contracted leprosy? You, you know, so when we talk about, well, where does... Um, so-called, you know, white people or Europeans, in a sense, this distinction, this great distinction between the races, especially the black and the white, come from. Leprosy or, or this connection is very, very, you know, is, is, is very scientifically, historically proven. In fact, we have an article we'll show you perhaps in another vid that where the scientists say that, you know, white people is fairly recent, in the whole genome of humanity. In other words, white people does not go back to like 10,000 years. White people don't even go back to 6,000 years. I'm not, I'm not saying the mentality that white people have doesn't go back that far. But now get this, if you can. That mentality was not distinguishable in a race of people that was different from the native indigenous people until leprosy was introduced to distinguish even further the genome type. In other words, to try to separate the holy from the profane, you understand, or the, the, the Hebrew from the Gentile. Remember, that was the reason that Yahweh had called out this particular people. Now, even when he called out this particular people, you understand, from other peoples, he continued, you understand, to separate the holier aspect to himself from the less or the unholy aspect. You see, this is something we have to look at a little more carefully as well. But the ten sins, these are the ten sins, and we want to put this, put this to you right here. One, idol worship idolatry. Well, idol worship is a big thing now, so, so it's interesting that a lot of these diseases are getting worse. Idol worship is a big thing all over the world. Everybody loves American Idol and idol worship today, right? Secondly, it's unchastity. Unchastity, that means like, you know, you know, do you, do the other person, do this, do that, do whatever you, do whatever makes you happy, do what thou wilt. Thirdly, bloodshed. Need we speak at length on that? Fourthly, the profanation of the divine name. That almost goes without saying, right? We can add that with 
with, you know, the profanation, profaning the divine name, both the, 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 the two truths of the Father and the Son profaning the divine name, um, blasphemy of the divine name, you know what I'm saying, which is a little bit profaning and blasphemy is a little bit different. Make a note of that. In other words, ask the question, what does profanation mean and what does blasphemy mean? Because it seems like it should mean the same thing. It doesn't. These are two separate sins, related but separate. Sixthly, robbing the public. What? Robbing the public. Wow. Interesting that those who rob the public and are the rich, they usually are also separated by this seeming racial distinction too. Think about that. Even in places in Africa where the people are supposed to be black, you see the ones that really are the rich people, you understand, who have robbed the public, they also share in common this skin disease situation. How ironic. Seventh, usurping a dignity to which one has no right. That's almost like the whitewashing of the picture of Jesus and making everybody think that, that, you know, everything heavenly, holy is white. Is, 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 is affected by skin disease, in other words. Eight, overweening pride, or what they call in modern society, hubris, overweening pride. Nine, evil speech or evil speaking. You know, evil speaking has gone so far that most folks just think, well, that's just how people communicate. That's just how we, that's how we chat. That's how we text. That's how we talk. You understand? Evil speech. Remember, there's destiny in words. Christ said there's destiny in words. So evil speech, you understand, it also, it also um, is, is one of the sins that, um, that, that, that can produce skin disease. Then ninth, I mean, that was ninth right there, evil speech. Tenth would be an evil eye. Well, you know what the evil eye is. Let me just kind of remind you. An evil eye. You see that evil eye right there? There you go. There's that evil eye. That's the tenth one. And you know where this, this is contained, right? The tenth one is the evil eye. You understand? The evil eye. Or what we call the Buddha. The Buddha oin. You understand? Now, the Midrash is it, it, cited as proofs. One. For idol worship, this is all connected with this teaching right here on leprosy. You know what I'm saying? Well, what I want to focus on more or less is what is leprosy? Touch on the, the distinction between the physical aspects of it, which Leviticus um, 13 goes into. There's a cleansing of it, which Leviticus 13 and kind of 14 deals with in this portion of Torah. And then also the spiritual aspects, because now we're in a day and a time. How is it applicable? Not that white people are coming on the scene. They've been on the scene. But the spiritual aspect means that a lot of black folks got leprosy too, but it's not the physical leprosy. Let's go through this. So the Midrash site has proof for idol worship, right? The experience of the Israelites who said of the golden calf, this is your God, O Israel, in Exodus 32 and 4. And then were smitten with leprosy as is reported in Exodus 32 and 25, where Moses saw that the people had broken, the Hebrew word um, broke, broken out, rather, is um, parua, parua, farua, parua means broken out. Now, this word broken out, if you study in the Hebrew, parua or parua, it's an indicating that leprosy had broken out or had para, fara. In other words, had it's it's from like word foray in a sense, like fruit, like like um, it had it had almost like been like fruit. You know, it is it was the it was the the they said judge a tree by its fruit. In other words, so this is the fruit. This is what had broken out. You know, it sounds like something growing. The idea is like, like a fruit growing or something growing, indicating that leprosy had broken out para among them. Two, for unchastity from the experience of the daughters of Zion, 
the daughters, sisters, listen up, the daughters of Zion of whom Isaiah 3 and 16 says, the daughters of Zion are haughty. We might say today are bitchy, but Bible says are haughty. And walk with stretched forth necks and oogling eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to even try to express that. You know, you know what this is. You know what I'm saying? You, you know the type, in other words. I pray if you are the type that you repent. And then Isaiah 3.17 says, Therefore will Adoni smite with a scab, with a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. You know what that means? A smite with a, a scab. It almost reminds me of all this permanent stuff. You know, the perm. You know, and that's a lie, too. The permanent is not permanent, really. They have to keep doing it. If it's so permanent, why do they have to keep doing it? Anyway, it says, smite them or the scab, with a scab, that head of the daughters of Zion. So that's the second truth. Thirdly, for bloodshed, from the experience of Joab, of whom Second Samuel 3 and 29 says, Let us fall upon the head of Joab, and upon all his father's house, and make fear not feel from the house of Joab one that has an issue, or that is a leper. In other words, one that has an issue means one that has some sort of discharge. You understand? Whether it's the man that has a genital discharge. Oh, in, in other words, this is serious. These are kind of serious things, but yet they are still things that are being dealt with even today. Although people today are not even considering Ja or God. They are trying out new pharmaceuticals, which sometimes drive them crazy and make them do a lot of things that they forget or would like to forget. You know what I mean? You know, so, but they need to go to Ja. You understand? They need to get the God, the God problem right. Anyway, um, but they need to go through Jesus Christus, our black Lord and Savior. There's no way to really, God don't want to hear from them. If they go in Yeshua, he, he'll listen. For, fourthly, for the prof, prof, profanation, profaning of the divine name from the experience of Gehazi. You remember Gehazi? from 2 Kings 5 and 20, who, who, and it says here, But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has speared this Naaman, the Aramean, or the Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he brought. Jalib, Yahai, as the Lord lives, I will surely run after him and take of him somewhat. And the word somewhat in the Hebrew is um, meuma, meuma. And somewhat, meuma, it means also of the blemished or from the word mum, mum, or when we say mum is the word, Hebrew, blemish, that Naaman had. And thus Gehazi was smitten with leprosy. You see, when you're reading in, in, in the English, in the King James, you get the story like a fairy tale in a sense. You know what I mean? Like, like, a, like a story. But if you start studying the Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, or any of the original Afro-Shemitic languages, you begin to see another, another link that shows you, oh, see, see, on the outer level, Gehazi was like, wait, how... Come, how come Elisha didn't accept no no money from this guy? This guy is 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 a command of the Syrian army. He got leprosy. He comes to the prophet. Oh oh, Elijah don't want to take nothing. So let me run after him and let me go, <laughs> let me go get some of that meuma, you know. So he took of the meuma, but he got the mum. You know, said he got the blemish, and boom, the Bible says that Gehazi was smitten with leprosy. As Second Kings five twenty reports, Elisha said to Gehazi, "The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman, you know, or Naaman, shall cleave to you." Now, get that word cleave. It says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That means, you know. Join, you become one flesh, cleave. Almost like a knife will cleave to separate. But here, here is a, here's a, here, here's a reverse worldly logic. Because if you cleave something, you're cutting it apart. 
But in Jah's eyes, when you cleave it, you bring it together. It's just like as you would cut it as finely as you would cut it, taking two separate parts and finally bring them together. So here in Gehazi's case, the leprosy did what? It cleaved to him. The leprosy became like his spouse. Mm, mm, mm. Fifthly, for blaspheming the divine name. In the examples, look at the experience of Goliath. Goliath, Goliath, of whom 1 Samuel 17 and 43 says, quote, and the Philistine cursed David by his God. Ain't that something? The Philistine, the people with the funny haircuts, you know, they like to keep the hair on top and cut the sides like a Mr. T thing. You can look at the archaeology. It's weird. That's why, you know, a lot of these guys that like to go to locks on top and shave the side. That's, that's a classic Philistine style. So, you know, watch what you're doing. Just shave everything off and, and let it grow back if you got one of these crazy kind of styles like that. But the Philistine cursed David by his God. And 1 Samuel 17, 46 says, This day will Adoni deliver, or in the Hebrew, Sagar, 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 you. Will Sagar you. And the term deliver, Sagar, is used here in the same sense as Leviticus 13 and 5 uses it with regard to leprosy. When it says, And the priest shall shut him up or the priest shall cigar him up, shall deliver him or shut him up. Sixthly, for robbing the public. Now, we're just going through the proofs of these ten um, sins that are, scripturally speaking, related to skin disease slash leprosy. See, we always say it's leprosy in the Bible, or leprosy, leprosy, the old time leprosy, but really the, the limbs, limbs that way actually, and the.